Greetings from Bethel Memorial Baptist Church. We had prayer meeting tonight with 13 people online with us. No one swam out to the church to be with us tonight. I admit I was a little bit tired. I uh, uh, Seasonal allergies are kicking in and, and a whole day of rain can sometimes get you down. But it's always a blessing to get together with brothers and sisters in the Lord in prayer. We had some, uh, some, some new people that were with us tonight. and Some of the regular people could not be with us but it was an encouragement to share our praise items and also to share our prayer requests and know that we are fleeing to a God that can lay hold of us and we can lay hold of him. I'm gonna share a verse a little bit about how God is our rock tonight. But before I do that, let me open in a prayer. Father, I thank you. I thank you for the way that you care for us. And I pray that you would indeed bless us to, to, to know you and to trust that you will always be there for us. I thank you for your care and that we can know that you truly do uh, love us and you call us to come to you. The throne room of, of grace is always open to your children. We thank you that you love us that much. It's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. The psalmist uh, verse that I'm taking is Psalm 18.2. It says, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Think about all those ways to say something. Uh, they all have that same theme of strength and uh, protection and, and just the, the rock, a sila, the, the, Greek, the Hebrew word means a, a rock formation. It's, a, it's a, not just one rock, but a formation of rocks that provide a stronghold, a matsud, a fortress. And the idea of being a deliverer, it's a place of escape. The idea of escape comes through there. We can escape because God delivers us. And, and of course, God, the word El, the Hebrew word El, referring to just the, the strong one. And then the second time the word rock is used, it's a different Hebrew word, T-Z-U-R, Zer. Um, and then the word refuge is Kashaw. We talked about those last week in Isaiah that take make lies their refuge. We don't. We make the rock our refuge and the fortress and the deliverer and all the things. Um, we also see the shield. We know what a shield is. We thank the Lord that he can be our mocane, our shield. And then the horn of my salvation. To think about the horn, it could also mean a hill. It's Keron and the salvation is Yesha. You can hear the word Yeshua coming in there for the word salvation. And then finally, a uh, stronghold, misgob. Just think about all those images that come to mind when you think about the Lord is our rock. When I think about all that, I want to note the sub superscription that comes before this song. It says to the choir master, a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, who addressed the words of this song to the Lord on the day when the Lord rescued him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. He said, I love you, O Lord, my strength. That's the first verse. And then we've, we're, we've been looking at verse two. Think about all that is behind this. All the ways that God delivered David from his enemies, including King Saul. And that's what he's listing for us, the different things. God can save us in so many ways. He saves each of us. I, I think about, we had four people that had COVID-19 in, in November in our household. And I, I like to tell people we had four different people, four different sets of systems, uh, symptoms. We had three different doctors. We had four different types of treatment for each one of us. Well, our God is big enough to deliver in any way that he needs to. And I think that's why it's such a blessing to see all these words for rock that David had. But then I asked the, the, the prayer meeting people, what do you picture on this kind of rock? And I always go to Jesus though. So, the wise man builds his house upon the rock, something where you could lay a flat place and you could build something on it and, and know that when the rains come down that uh, the, the house will stand firm. But then I remember two years ago, my wife and I were in Israel and uh, this week, in fact, and, and one of the places we went was a place called En Gedi. And En Gedi is where David fled from Saul. You picture mountains, and David was fleeing. There were caves in that, those mountains. 
At one point, it talks about how David's on one ridge and Saul's hotly pursuing on the second ridge. Now, this is not what I picture when I picture about God being my rock. One of the things we said, why, you know, one thing you know about Israel, there are rocks everywhere. But here in this place in En Gedi, it's just, it's amazing. I don't think of this as very stable. I have neuropathy in my feet. I don't like to walk anything that's un, not smooth. But David was picturing this as a source of strength and rescue and escape. And it just, it strikes me that God can use something so harsh looking as, as, a, as a picture of comfort for King David. Now, there are two types of animals we saw when we were in Israel that lived here. The one is the ibex, and it's kind of like a goat creature with the big antlers there. And to see how nimble he is on the rocks as he can move up and down. The, the, you think about the mountain goat, and that's probably what we refer to there. There was also this thing called the rock hyrax or, or a badger. It's referred to in the Bible as a coney. And there were these things that were rodent looking. It's not pleasant to see. But they were around us, and they didn't trouble us. We didn't trouble them. But what they told us one interesting thing about, uh, usually one of the conies or rock hyraxes will get into an area, and the, the rest of his friends are there. He'll go up to a high place where he can keep a lookout. And if anything comes that's a threat, he'll let out a big squeal, and everybody will know they need to take protection and find it in the rocks. They're just pictures of this. Well. I went back to this uh, idea of, of the rock because of this verse here. This was in the Daily Bread a couple of days ago. Psalm 73, 26, my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. That word strength was that word I can't say, T-Z-U-R. It could also be the rock of my heart and my portion forever. And then the devotional went on to talk about our heart and how frail it can be. And it looked at three different hearts. The hummingbird heart is a fraction of an ounce in, in weight, and it beats 800 times a minute. Think about that. And then compared it to the heart of the blue whale, that's a half a ton, and it beats only 10 times per minute. And then, of course, then the human heart didn't tell us how much it weighs. I could have looked it up, but I didn't but it said it beats 65 to 70 times a minute. It's interesting to think about the different creatures God has made and the different organs that each one has, particularly the heart, to know that a hummingbird heart needs to be able to beat that fast. And, and a hummingbird's lifespan is not that great. Um, the blue whale's heart, blue whales can last a long time. And just think about how that, that half ton heart beating just 10 times per minute. But then think of the human heart that is resilient enough to carry us through 70 years or more of life that uh, can take, give us the, 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 the blood that, that we need that is oxygenated by the lungs and, and all the ways that we find uh, life in that. I want you to think about the struggles that we have. I keep getting discouraged by hearing about other people that have gotten COVID. We, I want it to be over. I want the vaccine to be taking its part and not hear about new cases. But the fact is we're not there yet. And I don't know when we'll be there, but I know that God is there. He's all those pictures of, of rescue and, and rock and stability that we need in difficult times. I hope you're blessed by these verses. It was just a, a message I needed and needed to share. And, and some of the people that were uh, at prayer meeting tonight going through some difficult times or their family members are going through difficult times. And we pray that we would be able to turn to the God who is our rock. Father, I thank you. I thank you for your immense strength, your ability to provide a place for us to escape. Lord, we find ways to escape in this world and they're not healthy. Help us to see our escape, our deliverance from you. Help us to, to, to climb and go to the place, the, the formations of rock, the place that you provided for us in the midst of a difficult world, in a dry and weary land, very close to the picture that I showed there. There was a great waterfall 
as an oasis there in En Gedi. And all of those things were needed. And even the word rock suggests the rock that was uh, struck by Moses that poured forth water. There's so many ways that you can deliver us. Help us to cling to that, to cling to that, that, that we need not fear the things that may overtake us because you are our strength. I thank you, Father. I ask that you bless us with that encouragement. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless.